morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed forecast update for February 19th, 2025. A lot to get through today, including a twin tropical cyclone threat, one over in Western Australia, which will likely become a very powerful tropical cyclone, and now one over in the Coral Sea, which is beginning to slowly develop, or at least the signs are now beginning to slowly develop. Neither are a threat to Australia, however, it's still important that we take a look at these systems and understand the impacts that they'll have, especially over North Queensland and extreme northern WA. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider to subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Let's get stuck straight into things this morning uh, with a look at the tropical cyclone over in Queensland. It's expected to development over the coming couple of days. So you can see with the monsoon trough, it's beginning to become a lot more active now between the uh, Cape York Peninsula and the Gulf of Carpentaria and then over towards PNG and the Solomon Islands. Plenty of rainfall and showers now streaming into the far north Queensland coastline. And I said a couple of days ago that from today we're expecting moderate to heavy rainfall to be pretty persistent across the northern extremities of the Cape York Peninsula, especially for locations around the Daintree and north of the Daintree Rainforest. I did specifically say north of Cooktown. It does look like that rainfall is now beginning to build at this time. And it has certainly been building overnight with 24-hour rainfall accumulations up in the far north of Queensland between 50 and 150 millimetres for a lot of locations. That's not the important part, though. And whilst this rainfall will continue, that's the tropical low that we're most interested in this time. I would just like to preface this forecast by saying there's still quite a bit of uncertainty, but the forecast is becoming a lot more polished day by day, hour by hour. And of course, this is no threat to the Queensland coastline and really no threat to Queensland at all, even her adjacent islands to the coastline. This is certainly not a system that's worth panicking or worrying about right now. And we were throwing out the 19th to the 22nd as formation time. It's the 19th today and we're expecting this tropical low slash tropical cyclone to begin its first stages of de development through today and especially towards tomorrow. You can see it here on the Eastern Blue forecast beginning to spin up offshore from Cairns, about halfway between Cairns and the Solomon Islands actually uh, throughout the course of tomorrow and then in towards Friday and by this weekend we're likely to see a fully fledged and strengthening tropical low or even a very weak tropical cyclone. If it isn't a tropical cyclone by this weekend, it'll certainly be on the road to that by around Sunday night into Monday morning. And you can see here between the other forecast models by Sunday night, uh, the GFS is kind of the only one on a bit of an outlier at this time. But between the three major forecast models, we're expecting either at least a very strong tropical low on the cusp of becoming a tropical cyclone or a very weak category one tropical cyclone immediately to the south of the Solomon Islands, well offshore from Queensland here. In fact, halfway between Cairns and uh, Luganville on Vanuatu. Uh, I reckon the most likely positioning of this system is going to be around where the axis is uh, po uh, positioning it and placing it right now. It doesn't really matter that much and it's also not expected to be a strong system at this time. Strengthening is expected to happen through the early stages of next week. It will definitely become a Category 1 tropical cyclone at least at some point in its life. I do believe that that's going to be the case here. And whilst it is still a little bit murky in the forecast beyond about Tuesday or Wednesday in terms of how strong the system is going to get and whereabouts the system is going to go, it's looking like the trend of the forecast is now pushing this system further and further away from the Queensland uh, side of things. So for those in Queensland that were looking at the chance of a landfall between around Tuesday out towards the first or the second uh, couple of days of March, it definitely looks like that those chances now are significantly dropping. And I think you can breathe a very heavy sigh of relief. There's really a very minimal chance this time that this tropical cyclone's forecast changes and we see this system go into the Queensland coastline. I think this is going to remain out to sea for the remainder of its lifetime, which means that the forecast doesn't matter an awful lot. But what you need to know is that this system here is going to be a pretty weak system for the most part. Beyond about Wednesday or Thursday, expecting this system to track towards New Caledonia and Vanuatu and possibly even make a landfall on New Caledonia. And you can see here that this is the GFS forecast. Uh, it doesn't really have a clue where this system is going, but it's well out to sea here, well offshore from Queensland, being dragged around by another tropical low around the Fiji area. Uh, and it's in stark contrast to yesterday evening's forecast, which took the storm right over a landfall around the uh, Rockhampton area. So at this time, it certainly looks like the forecast is taking the system well out to sea and remaining it is a very weak system and uh, of course absolutely no threat to Queensland. There will still be some impacts and if you do live on coastal Queensland, you've been up there for a couple of years, you will be able to tell that there is something brewing in the Coral Sea. That's definitely uh, kind of a certain at this time. Heavy falls are expected across the Cape York Peninsula with isolated heavy rainfall expected north of Cairns over the coming couple of days uh, and that rainfall will be, like I said, heavy at times with three day accumulations up to about 250 millimetres, certainly possible. You can see on the forecast models, uh, especially with the Eastern Bear forecast, there is some good falls here across the Cape York Peninsula. GFS as well calling for some pretty good falls here and there up to about 150 millimetres. So all around, certainly the chance of some heavy rainfall and that'll extend through the Daintree Rainforest and then down to the uh, Cassowary Coast as well where spot falls between 150 and 300 millimetres can be expected over the next five days. Beyond that, the rainfall will ease off. There will be some showers along the Witch Sundays as well, especially heading in towards Prospine and then coastal areas south of Mackay. We could be seeing accumulations up to 100 millimetres over the next five days. And also, as you can see on the wind, uh, accumulations 
simulation map here over the next week or so, peak wind gusts uh, along these locations along coastal Queensland will be between 60 and 75 kilometres an hour. So certainly some blustery showers can be expected here around the Whit Sundays, especially going into this weekend and through Saturday and Sunday, some uh, stronger winds are expected in those areas. So it's not going to feel like absolutely nothing is happening out in the Coral Sea. You certainly will be able to tell that the stuff is brewing out there, but it's going to be nothing in terms of significant impacts. A couple of showers and blustery winds here and there. And again, I need to stress this for Queensland. There is no need to panic. There is no need to fret. Uh, like I said earlier on, the forecast is now trending further and further out to sea with this low pressure system. And it's very unlikely that it's going to end up becoming a Queensland tropical cyclone threat. In fact, the chances that I'd give it right now are probably below 2% here, uh, which is very good news for Queensland, of course, especially on the rainfall front. They do not need any more rainfall, but also a tropical cyclone impact, especially one of the magnitude that what the GFS was forecasting yesterday around Rockhampton would have been disastrous. And you can actually see here in terms of the wind accumulations map, peak wind gusts won't even exceed 100 kilometers an hour in the tropical cyclone for the most part, unless you're a follower of the axis. But to be honest, the axis has been a big high baller on the system for quite a few days now. And I do think that the axis is not going to be a forecast that materializes. It's certainly the most bullish one and probably the one that you'll see in thumbnails and uh, Facebook posts, that's for sure. But it doesn't look like the axis forecast here is going to materialize. In short, weak system will out to sea and most likely going to be an impactor for Vanuatu and New Caledonia as opposed to a Queensland impact. Again, for locations along the Queensland coastline, a tropical cyclone is not headed your way. There is no need to prepare. There is no need to panic. Panic buying or even shopping and preparing for a tropical cyclone impact right now is nothing but selfish and unnecessary, so there's no need to be doing it. Again, I urge everybody in Queensland to remain vigilant. It is tropical cyclone season. I'll get to the rainfall forecast for Queensland, especially the long range one. I've got a bit of a discussion for that later on in the forecast update, so stick around for that. But there is no need to panic over the next two weeks for Queensland. There's nothing on the forecast, and I hope that that has put everybody's mind at ease over in Queensland, especially North Queensland, because they're just still recovering now from those disastrous floods that blew through about two weeks ago. That's enough for Queensland. The far more interesting story is a tropical low developing north of the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf and Kalambaru over in Western Australia. I called it. It is going to become a powerful tropical cyclone here, and it certainly is on the way to becoming that. I mean, take a look at the tropical low right now. It seems like we're having Wi-Fi problems here at HQ. You can see it's really starting to, uh, to develop quite nicely here. Wind observations aren't that strong. You can see here over on Trofton Island, 28 kilometers an hour out of the southeast towards the east. So it's nothing especially special out here. And over on Adela Island, similar winds being reported there. Heavy falls currently north of Derby and Broome. Some heavy rainfall has been reported there over the last 24 hours and you can see actually on the satellite imagery for the last six hours this system has been developing really quite nicely that's for sure if we are going to get a satellite loop out of this which is going to be very slow to develop but yeah this system well on the way to becoming a tropical low. I reckon the Bureau of Meteorology will upgrade it to tropical low status later on today. They might have done it already actually. This system here is certainly on the way to becoming a significant tropical cyclone and all forecast models now tipping this to become a major tropical cyclone. Again I would like to preface this that and say that this is absolutely no threat to the WA coastline beyond the showers and gusty winds and being brought to the Kimberley coastline this afternoon and into this evening. Beyond that, no impacts can be expected along the WA coastline for the next week. But there is an interesting turn that this tropical cyclone takes, which I'll get to in just a few minutes. Let's chuck it over to the forecast right now and see what is expected over the coming couple of days. So both the Eastern Earth and the Axis forecast are suggesting a really powerful system here. I'm going to be using the Eastern Earth forecast model here, considering it's kind of the perfect blend between the uh, Eastern Earth and the Axis. And I do actually think that more or less the Eastern River forecast is going to eventuate here. I do still reckon that this system is going to get significantly stronger than what the forecast is suggesting. So you can see rapid development continuing through tonight into tomorrow morning, likely to achieve tropical cyclone status actually tomorrow afternoon by the looks of things as it heads well offshore from WA, halfway between Broome and Bali by the looks of things. You can see this system here moving further and further off the WA coastline and then rapid strengthening kicking in on Friday night here. And you can see as this system continues to organize and develop quite rapidly through Saturday and Sunday, rapid strengthening expectations to continue, reaching its peak intensity sometime Monday night into early Tuesday mornings. It jogs down towards the south uh, west of WA here, and by Tuesday night, it looks like weakening will kick in. This system, there's not much staying in the way of it. It's going to remain a very small system, a very compact system, and it's going to have plenty of uh, ease in the atmosphere to intensify. And you can see, uh, especially as we check back on the radar and the satellite imagery, it is a very small tropical cyclone right now, and it's had absolutely no problems in of intensification. Uh, I shouldn't really call it a tropical cyclone, considering it's not that close to becoming a tropical 
tropical cyclone at all, but it is a very small system at this time, much smaller than we saw with tropical cyclone Zelia, which means this system is going to have a very easy time to intensify. Wind shear in the West Australian waters is basically zero at this time. There's nothing in the way of this system as well, and I can't really stress that enough, but you can see here, mid-level wind shear, especially as we push this forward out to this weekend, there's going to be an upper-level high-pressure system uh, in the WA waters here offshore from the WA coastline, and that's going to provide some very favourable circulations and some very favourable wind speeds for this tropical cyclone to intensify. Uh, and again, upper-level high-pressure systems is exactly the thing you want to see on top of an intense tropical cyclone for it to maintain its mm -hmm. intensity. It just really helps with the outflow and it really helps with the maturing of these tropical cyclones. And the most important factor to understand is, of course, uh, sea temperatures as well. If we pull up a sea temperature map here, well offshore from WA, this system's not going to be tracking where tropical cyclone Zelia went. You can see as such sea temperatures here are between 28 and 30 degrees Celsius. There are some cooler spots here and there down to about 28 degrees Celsius, but I mean, as it gets out towards Sunday and Monday out in these waters here, well offshore from the WA coastline, it's 28 pushing 29, even 30 degrees in some locations. So again, plenty of energy in the waters for this tropical cyclone. Whilst it won't have the deepest convection of all time, it won't be as intense as tropical cyclone Zelia by the looks of things, at least on the forecast, it certainly has a shot of becoming a very powerful and very organized tropical cyclone. And as it goes through eye wall replacement cycles, there will be fluctuations in the storm's intensity, of course, but by the looks of things, like I said, there's not going to be an awful lot standing in the way of this system. And like I said, I expect a peak intensity of at least category three strength severe tropical cyclone status uh, to occur beyond Saturday night through Sunday, Monday, and into Tuesday night. That's when weakening's going to kick in here, and it still remains a pretty small system, but as it undergoes an extra tropical transition, becomes a messy low pressure system next Wednesday on the 26th of February, this becomes a pretty interesting situation here. You can see that it heads down to the southwest corner of Western Australia, and it remains a reasonably strong tropical low here. Now, I wouldn't be showing you this if no other forecast model was suggesting it, but you can see between the access forecast model and even the GFS forecast model here, there is actually suggestions that this system is going to make a turn for the southwest corner of Western Australia, and not make a landfall, but certainly go into the southwest corner of West Australia's coastline as an extra tropical system. It's not going to be a powerful tropical cyclone when it gets down to the southwest corner of WA. It's going to be a much weaker system by the looks of things, but for the most part, with all major forecast models suggesting an extra tropical cyclone to make its landfall on the WA coastline between Geraldton and Bunbury uh, sometime Wednesday night through Thursday or even in towards Friday morning next week. This is certainly something that I want to keep an eye on at this time. For Perth residents and for residents along the southwest of WA, there's no need to panic at this time. There's also no need to, pre uh, need to prepare. And I know that this is a pretty worrying forecast, but this is a very weak extra tropical system here. And it's going to feel very similar to a winter front if it does make its crossing. In terms of rainfall as well, there will be some really good accumulations. So this is actually really good news for the southwest corner of WA. Right now, I don't fully believe that it's going to happen. I would give it about a 10 to 20% chance of occurring. However, if we see this trend continued in the forecast models, and their forecast tomorrow, especially from the Eastern Bev and the GFS forecast model. If I see this held for tomorrow, even out towards this weekend, I'm certainly going to start calling for a significant tropical, uh, extra tropical cyclone impact along the southwest corner of WA. So again, certainly a situation of watch but don't act at this time. In fact, it's probably a situation of watch but don't get too excited because these things can bust out pretty significantly. What this is not going to be is a powerful tropical cyclone making landfall. It's not going to be a Saroja. It's not going to be a tropical cyclone Olby. It's going to be much weaker than that. It will be undergoing an extra tropical transition, which means that it's going to be a substantially weaker system. For the most part, it's just going to be a rainmaker, and we shouldn't really be talking about this system in great detail here, but you can see three-day rainfall accumulations along the southwest of WA actually looking really good here on the forecast. Anywhere south of where the low-pressure system crosses, which at least what the forecast is suggesting will happen somewhere around Cervantes or Durian Bay, we could be seeing rainfall accumulations between 20 and 100 millimetres, and some really good falls actually expected down towards Bunbury. It will be a much drier system, of course, once it gets down here. Like I said, extra tropical transition is it's going to feel a lot more like a winter front with a lot less rainfall and a lot calmer winds compared to what a tropical cyclone will bring through. Certainly a very interesting aspect on the forecast and one that I'm going to keep a very close eye on. It will also bring some warm temperatures to the southwest corner of WA into early next week. That's another thing to keep in the back of your head. But at this time, certainly an interesting aspect on the forecast and it really isn't anything more than that at this time. Any questions or comments on it, please do leave them in the comments section down below. I'd be more than happy to help you out with this system here. It's certainly going to be a very interesting one. I'm very excited for what's going to become Tropical Cyclone Alfred at this time. I saw a post actually that it's been, its name was suggested to be Tropical Cyclone Anthony, but they changed it to Alfred because of the PM. I'm not 100% sure of the truth of that, so if anyone could verify that for me in the comments section down below, I'd be more than happy to uh, take a look. It's a funny take and certainly one that I would believe, but um, might be a bit of food for thought, a bit of trivia here on the cycle.
In terms of tropical lows and tropical cyclones, that's pretty much it for this morning's forecast update. In terms of rainfall over the next 14 days, as you can see around the northern areas of Australia, there's not an awful lot on the cards. We're certainly going to be heading into that dry period by the looks of things once these tropical lows move offshore from Queensland and WA respectively. It looks like beyond about the 25th, the rainfall is really going to pipe down for far northern uh, Australia, especially in the northern territory and also for parts of Queensland and down towards WA as well. It certainly looks like the rainfall is going to die down there. Now, the long range forecast is suggesting return to the uh, um, tropical moisture and the MJO will return across northern Australia around March 20th and that's where my numbers are pointing towards a much uh, larger uptick in rainfall across northern Australia. We'll see a return to tropical cyclone activity especially along the Queensland coastline and then it looks like beyond that it looks like uh, much wetter conditions are going to be on the cards for northern Queensland also down towards central Queensland as well. It's certainly an interesting aspect of the forecast and stick around for the Cyclones Oz channel for that. There's no better way to do that by, than by subscribing but for the most part for a lot of areas of Queensland you're going to have another month to dry out from the really soggy conditions that they've had over the last couple of weeks. In fact, the wet season has been pretty wet and much above average for a lot of locations of Queensland. Rainfall for this year so far has been much above average so far, so it will be good to see a month of relatively dry weather across far northern Queensland. Just get things a much, uh, into a much drier position, that's for sure. In terms of the long-range thunderstorm and storm forecast across southeast Queensland into coastal New South Wales, it's not an awful lot to be talking about either. You can see as we skip through the next couple of days, whilst there will be a chance of thunderstorms on Friday night around the northeast east of New South Wales and then storms and showers expected along New South Wales and Victoria and especially in towards Tasmania with the passage of a cold front coming through on a Sunday afternoon and evening after some pretty warm days across uh, parts of Victoria. There will be some good thunderstorms here and there on Sunday and also in towards Monday throughout Victoria and New South Wales. There's not an awful lot to be talking about here either and it looks like the southeast of Queensland, the northern rivers and the northeast of New South Wales will also have to wait substantially longer for the, an uptick in thunderstorms. Normally we see all those thunderstorms come through between sep uh, September out towards December and then December, January and February can be a lot drier months and then uh, late March in towards April and May the storms and showers do uh, pick up again in uh, the southeast of Queensland, the northeast of New South Wales and I do believe that that's going to be the case again this year especially with the return to the tropical moisture. I think there's going to be much more rainfall across southeastern Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales with rainfall events, east coast lows and severe thunderstorm outbreaks as we head in towards late March and early April. It's certainly going to be a very good time of the year for those thunderstorms to begin materialising again. Long range for forecast suggesting a bit of rain for the crossing to parts of New South Wales. I don't buy this for one bit. We're taking a look at March 5th, by the way. So again, very long range and out into the future. We'll have to see what this trends towards over the coming couple of days to see if there is a bit of a rainfall event on the cards. But yeah, in terms of the Australian weather forecast, kept short and sweet this morning. Any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to help you out over there. But the long range forecast is looking pretty boring here. And even if we take a look at the rainfall forecast across the southern parts of Australia, it is also looking pretty boring for the most part here. Taking out that rainfall event, there's nothing to be talking about of significant rainfall for New South Wales, Victoria or South Australia with some isolated falls, like I said, coming through Sunday of between 5 and 15 millimetres here and there for South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania. But apart from that, that is it to be talking about in today's forecast update. Interesting stuff over in Queensland, interesting stuff over in Western Australia. Subscribe for more information and subscribe for a new series of YouTube shorts coming through one minute segments on how to prepare for tropical cyclones and explanations around the tropical cyclones and tropical impacts. That's going to be coming out sometime hopefully in the next few weeks, especially as we move into this quiet period. I'm hoping to release that pretty shortly. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. The list keeps growing and growing and growing and I couldn't be more thankful for the people on this list here. Their support is much appreciated. Check out the Facebook page as well, but that is all from me this morning and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.